Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Hope you're all doing good. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this is again a glorious time, a blessed time that God had united us and brought together, brought us together um, under His throne room of grace. And uh, what surprises me or what amazes me is, is a great um, uh, blessing or a channel that God had enabled these days that we could go online and we can start sharing the word of God. And uh, we have not done this playfully. Yeah. Uh, if you can subscribe to my channel, you would be seeing the testimony. But yeah, unfortunately, it's in Tamil. Uh, but we have, I, I was touched by God at the age of 18. I was born Catholic and God spoke to my heart and I had to walk out of the Catholic congregation at a very young age as a teenage boy. And I dedicated my life to Christ and uh, I was part of Karunia University. Um, I, I'm a graduated engineer and God touched me and my first Bible, I still have it with me. I got it at the age of 18 and I started reading the word of God for the first time at the age of 18. And I started understanding the word of God and who Christ was and why he died for us, why he rose again, what is the resurrection power, what is the power behind grace, and what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what is whose Holy Spirit and why he has to be given uh, to us. And it's almost like 26 years and I have not got into the, gone into the habit of uh, preaching or gone into stages and etc. That, that's not very important, right? Sharing the word of God. We need not even know who I am. It's important that we share the word of God and we appreciate the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Appreciate the blood that was shed for us, that we are redeemed, we are born again. The new creations in him, all things have passed away. Second Corinthians 4, 17, 5, 17 is at work in us, right? We were in bondage, we were in sinful deeds, but then God redeemed us, delivered us. And sharing that gospel, the good news, you don't need to be somebody. All that you need to do is just dedicate your life. Yeah. And I keep telling you this, right? I never went to Bible college or never been in any kind of seminars or whatever. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm quite prompt in attending church. But um, I started reading Bible, made Bible as my personal book. I'm not good at reading anything else, not read, read any biography or any other book written by any uh, child of God, not saying you shouldn't be doing. There is no norm. There is no rule. But for me, there is the plenty of time that I'd spent in reading the word of God itself was um, kind of too less. <laughs> Enormous number of hours, tens and hundreds and thousands of hours I would have spent together uh, reading the word of God. But that itself seemed to be too less for me because there is so much. And you don't need anyone, brothers and sisters. You just need the Holy Spirit, the helper who's, in, who's inside of you and who wants to help you shed the light. And I keep telling you this, the importance of reading Bible is there is a small book in your, and that, that is a book of life with God. And there is a book of life inside of you, right? And you need to keep filling it with the word of God, the promises, the truth, that gospel um, is, is talking about. It's about you. Bible is a personal book. Understand this, right? It's personal. Just put in your names everywhere. Do not look at uh, as of it, it as of it is spoken or written about someone else. It's about you. And you start filling that book with the word of God. The Holy Spirit works with you to remind you the time of need, times uh, that are really hard, struggles, you know, hardship, spiritual warfare. He reminds you how to fight that good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 4.12 and 6.12. Yeah, you will be raised as a role model of faith, love and purity. How? Not without knowing the word of God. That's why it's very important that we learn this word of God together. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a privilege that almost 26 years or more than that. Yeah, we would have read Bible so many times, meditated. And there came a time where Holy Spirit opens the door saying, yes, you can. It's not that I'm qualified. It's not that I'm righteous, but all glory to Jesus who hides us and who reveals him himself through us. OK, or you might be wondering, I always use plural, right? Us, us and we did and all that. Yeah, 
the very reason is because it's not just me it's the holy spirit's workmanship in me it's him and not me and therefore we work in partnership and it's he with whom i cooperate and he reveals gets manifested through me same with you my brother my sister my friend my beloved yeah god uses you as he has predestined you and me for a specific purpose and that's how he redeemed us redeemed us through his blood okay that's a little bit about me i i somehow felt convicted in my heart that i need to talk this um this 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 evening about the uh, you know the, the 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 reason why we are here together united in in one word of god one gospel one name jesus christ our lord all right good now we are dealing with this biblical serious groups of evil spirits that deceive and we had split into episodes and i would say we are in the second episode where we are dealing with the third group that is the spirit of the world in other words worldly spirits and we had been dealing with this subject for the last 3 4 sessions and this is kind of not coming to an end and we are not in a rush as i keep telling you i would strongly encourage you to please go through we have created separate playlists and you you need to all that you need to do is subscribe to our channel and therefore you get access to all our playlists and we have uh, very tidily and neatly organized the episodes therefore you study the bible systematically right the very reason we began this uh, kind of series is the teachings in christendom are not systematic these days it's not organized they don't correlate things and speak they pick one message what is my lucky verse this sunday most of the preachers but there are good preachers of course i keep appreciating right i i owe a lot to many preachers who have preached to me uh, through virtual um, uh, sermons that i download from youtube i listen to a lot of preachers and um yeah i have attended a lot of congregations i told you please go those in old tamil you can go and please listen to my testimony i've explained how was my journey it was such a bumpy ride not an easy one um but the point here is um it's it's a very organized kind of um uh, uh channel where we have split episodes and you can go through it and we we kind of counter almost all the biblical teachings doctrines philosophies promises law commandments laws and commandments and we kind of present it to you in a way that it works you know together for all, you know it works together for your good romans 8:28 yeah god makes all things work together for your good because he is good father and that's why when situations turn against us circumstances are rising against us illness in the body sickness at home crisis at job workplace that's not to be repeated you will not think other way you will not think otherwise because you know that god is doing something in the background that you do not know in the midst of you jeremiah 33:3 by the way because he is god who is faithful and revelation chapter 3 verse 21 says that you know those that overcome the temptations of the world the struggles of the world only will be able to inherit the throne only will be able to in other words step into the kingdom of heaven and they have no inheritance in me if they are not overcomers and jesus tells that i have overcame this world and that's why i'm saying follow me yeah john 16:33 he was tempted like us at all points brethren you believe me or not you believe gospel or not or you are in that Uh, superficial or supernatural world of things where some of the preachers false prophets i would say false teachers they preached that oh he had some supernatural powers he was son of god uh he would not feel the pain no that's the lie of the devil when you have gone through pain remember that jesus truly understands and that's why he's interceding for you and me holy spirit is groaning and uh, you know praying praying for us with three years romans 8:26 hebrews 2:18 we always keep referencing the bible biblical words as those have the habit of taking notes take notes okay and that's why that's why it's very important to travel through the word of god and start filling that little book inside of you the you know the book of life inside of you 
that is a book of life on earth and that's inside of you that is a book of life in heaven that will be opened during the white throne judgment by god the great or small the rich or poor all will be lined up and both the books will be referenced matched up why the book of life is nothing but a testimony a replication the mirror image of the book of life that is inside of you you know that they take a copy of your book of life your testimony but on top of that yeah god appreciates you and writes few things in the book of remembrance and then he comes to a conclusion and he starts judging you matthew 12:36 please read it offline revelation 20 read it offline about these judgment things and we have done a beautiful series on judgment you can just go through it you will understand what it is okay now we had been dealing with the subject of spirit of the world and we had been talking about the types of the worldly spirits and we did that subject we are done with the subject until chapter 8 and chapter 9 today we have kicked off with the um the extended portion of the worldly spirit that is the characteristics of a worldly believer or characteristic features of the worldly believers in plural yeah some worldly believers uh, work in groups or some worldly believer work as a individual isn't it um what is this worldly believer worldly spirit understand worldly means it is like demon what is this brother you are thoroughly confusing can a believer be a worldly person absolutely that means that means you have not understood it properly even after speaking through four chapters almost four and a half hours of material you may have to rewind the tape that's exactly what we are trying to say right carrying the cross in hand and on the uh, around your neck in the form of a chain golden chain or a, a necklace or wearing a ring with its cross and having names like mark luke matthew george and all that doesn't make any difference you think that's how you classify people as believers in christ that's how you classify yourself as believer in, in christ no it's what inside of you how it is exercised in the midst of situations trials do you count it all joy in the midst of trials when your patience is put to test what is that comes out of you what kind of words what kind of reactions that determines whether you are really a child of god you are truly a worldly person or the believer in christ or a mix of both that's even more dangerous right if you are an hybrid breed of <laughs> christian if you are mixed with worldly things and as well as spiritual deeds yeah you know what wins the worldly things there is no concept of minus into minus plus no 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 plus into minus equal to negative right always the worldly things are a negative and you mix it with the plus the spiritual deeds multiplication what is the end product what is the end result it's negative which means what lake of fire is waiting for you you cannot mix the spiritual deeds with your worldly related aspects may it be belief may it be your character may it be your uh, circumstance may it be sorry not circumstance may it be your reactions what comes outside of you from deep within inside of you what you filled within inside of you determines how you position yourself outside of you or what comes out outside of you that's exactly what we are dealing and what we had been dealing in the last four five sessions um from the worldly angle now characteristic features of a worldly believer that's exactly why we have picked this up and we have at least some eight to nine characteristic features and we are going to take you through certain examples case studies and then you understand you equate it right it's not see if you have an attitude of listening to oh it, they are talking about someone else no this is very person we are talking about you and you can no way call yourself as a perfect child in god if you are doing so then you are number one devil god hates you you want to know where it is written in bible i'll tell you 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 to 10 those shall come and say that there is no sin or blemish in them they call themselves as liars and they call god him god god the almighty a liar too why because no one is perfect before the throne room of grace before god's presence we are all filthy rags all our righteous deeds are counted as filthy rags bunch of people there is no goodness in the flesh of man bible says okay therefore this is personally for you 
and me, both of us. Okay. But you don't have to condemn yourself, brothers. I'm telling you, out of 10 things, you may be doing 10 things, 8 things right. And there are still 2 things where you can improve. It's all about pressing hard towards perfection. Matthew 5, 48. Father in heaven says, you can become like me. You can get transformed just like I am. But not without an effort. Not without the wisdom. Not without the knowledge. Not without the light that's given to you by the Holy Spirit from the word of God. What gives you the light? Some fellow getting onto the stage and sharing his experience. Last night I dreamt something like this. God took me to heaven. No, no human testimony is going to shed light on you. And you know what? In other words, the devil himself will present himself as father of light. He's capable to do miracles also. He, he does signs, wonders uh, too. Yeah. But for, but, uh, gospel is full of examples. I don't remember the verses right away. Therefore, you need to discern. One of the gift is discerning. Capability, spirit of discernment. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I think. You, you need to take 1 to 12, I think. Um, it's about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, let's talk about the characteristic features of the worldly believers and the number one character that you will find often when you're walking in this world. When you gel with the worldly people or with the spiritual people or with the people that are of hybrid nature half spiritual, half worldly, you will find all of this existing. And why we are saying this is, if you are a spiritual brother in Christ, you are no exception. Whatever the worldly person goes through, you will have to go through as well. If somebody had told you something else, other than what we are telling you now, other than what gospel is telling you, what is gospel saying? John 14, 1, 27, John 16, 33. Yeah, Revelation 3.21. We have given all of these verses in this world that are full of troubles, tribulations, trials, temptations that are going to be permitted by God to test your faith and patience. Count it all joy. That's the difference. What I told you just now. Count it all joy. Why? Because the Father who called you is faithful. And He is the rewarder of those who worship Him in faith. Hebrews 11.6 that determines your character, whether you are a hybrid breed or you are a spiritual breed or you are a worldly breed, right? You are on the devil's side or on God's side or you are on 50-50. All goes well, you are on God's side. When nothing goes well, you are on devil's side because that's what comes out of you. And no condemnation, right? If you are of one of that type, no condemnation, brothers. Don't feel bad. Don't feel sorry. Oh, I've been walking with God 30 years. No, you have a chance, second chance. God says, he, God gave a commandment. Our father gave the commandment to the man. Forgive him anybody 770 times per day. Simple math, 7 multiplied by 70. 490 times you are supposed to forgive one brother. If you have 5 of that kind, multiplied by 5. <laughs> then imagine how much God is going to be merciful and patient. If a man himself is supposed to be forgiving somebody like this, you and I have so many chances. So don't get dismayed or discouraged. You have a chance. I have a chance. We all have chances. Let's use it because this is the grace, the period of grace where you can fix things, but not in heaven. All right. The first characteristic of the uh, worldly believer, right? It's quite a, see why we spend little time is the title itself is misleading, right? Worldly believer, right? Because of the circumstances when you're put to test. Yeah, when the seed is uh, sown on a rocky ground, it doesn't grow. On a thorny ground, it doesn't grow. The thorns get, the worries of the world gets, you know, so it, it kinds of ruptures, gets parched into the seed and that seed dies. The word of God dies inside of you. Why? Because you are so threatened, frightened, worried. Yeah, while I'm saying this, right, I'm also a good example. And you know what? It will continue. Maybe you have gone into some victorious uh, thing, uh, fighting a good fight of faith and you've come out. It's not all over, right? But you know, don't have to be scared. Only thing is your outlook should change. Outlook means what? Not your external behavior. Inside of you, whatever is there, the fear should be turned into courage. Yeah, your anxiety should be turned into dependency of God, the confidence in God. Philippians 4, 6. The Holy Spirit keeps reminding me about the word, uh, you know, the promises, scriptures. 
He's not allowing me to step into the title yet. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, let's get into the title now. The first category uh, which describes about the characteristics of a worldly believer is friends of the world lack intimacy with God. That's the title we want to give, right? They will be strongly associated with the world, yet they will call themselves as Christians. We go to church, oh, we go to fellow, we have fellowship, we attend Friday prayers and whatnot. And uh, when they are put to test, they fail miserably, right? Now, I want you to turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 19. We are going to compare the New and Old Testament and we are going to make some studies that way um, you understand things, right? And we are going to stick to one personality, possible extent, um, but we will we will collate. We will collate and study, right? Don't worry about, oh, is it only one reference? Don't worry. So, so far in 20 minutes, how many quotes we gave? Biblical scriptures. The Holy Spirit gave us so many references, isn't it? So we are not going to stick to one topic. Don't worry. Um, 19, uh, 1 to 3. It's about Sodom and Gomorrah. What happens here is um, the carnal believers, right, in general, they lack intimacy with God. They are not intimate. You know what is intimacy? Yeah? Mamas, mothers especially. How intimate are you, are you with your children? Tell me. How much or older they get? That's un undescribable, right? It's it's something that not that cannot be explained. It's that spirit to spirit. Wow, my child. Even if they talk anything bad against you, you would forgive, not think twice. Something happens to them. Wow, immediately your spirit groans. That's the Holy Spirit that I'm talking about. Who is having that kind of relationship intimacy and he longs for that intimacy that's why he says i come inside of you and i live inside of you because your body is the temple of god and we don't realize we don't welcome him we don't like to change we don't like to admit our faults we don't like to walk in light when he when he instructs us hey no this is not right you're insulting me you're hurting me you're making me grieve ephesians 4 30 you're making me grieve what happens? At some point, you know what happens? God destroys you, Bible says. 1 Corinthians 3.17 God destroys those who shall defile the temple of God. Why? Because you are hurting the Holy Spirit. And you know what is the destruction according to the New Testament? God will walk out of your life. It's not like he will send fire like how he had sent fire on Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed the people. All of us know that story, right? Brimstones came and it attacked and all that. That's Old Testament. New Testament, your judgment will be kept in reservation. It will be even worse, million times worse than that. In eternity, you will be burning in the lake of fire. You don't believe me? Take and read Revelation 20 onwards. You'll understand what I'm talking about. Revelation 20, 21, 22 will shed more light. We are not talking about some horrifying stories here. It's a reality. This is going to happen whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. There is a day coming where Everybody will have to look upon the Father eyeball to eyeball and he is going to judge you. On that everyone will be able to see Father's face and no one will die. But in, in today's era, you are living in the sinful world and you cannot look the holy of the holies face to face. Even Moses was not able to see, right? He was able to see the back of God when he asked in Exodus, you can take and read. I want to see your glory. He said, look at my back, beloved. He talks to him just like a friend talks to him 40 days. Can you imagine God sitting next to him and talking to him? Many things they would have spoken. Only few were written is what I understand or what I believe. Okay, come back to the original point, right? Now, they lack intimacy with God. They are not intimate, meaning what? Their spirit is not attached. They use God for business purpose, trading purpose. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, I want blessing, blessing, prosperity. This materialistic prosperity preachers are there, no? They will always use this uh, connotations or paraphrases from the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 28 will be their favorite topic. 1 to 13 only they will read. After 13, who will read? You have an assistant? You only should read and show, no? It curses on disobedience. If you disobey the law, what will happen? Actually, churches that are preaching after 13 will be the blessed church. It doesn't mean that we are always asking you to live in curses, poverty. No, we have always preached that you 
every christian should have their own house own cars to drive they should be majestic in life best of the dresses you should wear but you are not spendthrifts you are not going to have worldly pleasures you are not going to be the ones who will have dependency upon money that's not what we are trying to say your intimacy is not with the worldly riches but you are always after the spiritual deeds that's exactly why we are talking through series after series yeah the main objective here is inside of us must change therefore you are on the side of god okay come back here all right here we are talking about lot who who was sitting when yeah the, see the carnal believers nature will be they don't have intimacy with god god indwells within every believer why because he's in the form of holy spirit and that's why we explained just now okay now this lord fellow uh you know that right in in 18 if you can see um uh 18 and 17 you see there came an altercation between the servants of abraham and servants of lot and abraham and decided to move away from lot and he says lot i give you the upper hand look at the humility of abraham right and lot looks around and no abraham says hey pick the best whatever you want man that itself a believer is proving that he is a descendant of jesus christ when he give away certain things when it comes to a fight with your fellow brother even with your neighbor okay boss take it no problem okay my brother take it you you want to you want to take this take why god will give me the best don't worry don't worry such people have never seen begging for bread or losing anything or lacking for anything their children will be the best i will tell you yeah okay now abraham says you take it you know immediately this fellow looked around he saw there was a city a sodom and gomorra and uh, that was flourishing and uh, full of uh, uh, you know its water streams and all that and he started getting into the business of salt because there was so much of lime there and uh, salt business was his pr- primary business and he went there but this fellow um, you know uh, abraham is his uncle and he is nephew to abraham and therefore he learned who abraham's god was actually they were not born jewish people and in fact israel itself was not created right god called them because there were multiple gods at that point of time paganism was the religion those days there wasn't anything other than job job was the first believer in bible okay he was even before abraham yeah there were few people here and there and god wants to unite them and call them a nation israel that was his plan therefore he picked abraham and although he was called as the he is called as the father of the nation um, but actually if you see the promise was fulfilled through jacob okay now coming to the point and he says looking around uh, i want to go there but i am 100% sure bible doesn't talk about that this fellow would have learned enough about the culture of sodom and gomorrah don't you think so and he has also learned about what kind of god abraham's god is what is his nature he is holy of the holies he controls everything he is god of the universe he controls the heavenlies and everything no one can escape from him and he supernatural father and he 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 important thing is aspect is he just cannot tolerate sin whoever it may be he he would have learned enough on both the sides and that's why we have mixed the concept as worldly believer versus the spiritual believer now this guy is a hybrid kind of brand you know 50% there 50% there in fact if you, if i if i would say we talk about lot he, his heart is like 75% towards <clears throat> materials and 25% towards god yeah he doesn't want to give away god because he respects and that much we should understand why in hebrews 11 he was also named as one of the champions of faith therefore if god honors let us agree that we also honor him okay but where is this concentration right what dragged him towards sodom and gomorrah he would have learned the culture of sodom and gomorrah there were they were like once one gender marriage it's not only uh, authorized today the government of sodom and gomorrah authorized even those days itself that was quite common and we will show it to you from gospel yeah lesbians and homosexuals and uh, all this kind of gays and that was the primary they were sexually immoral and their gods were against the doctrines and principles of uh, 
our Yahweh father, right? Who said, I am that I am before Moses. He would have learned all of this and he had a choice to make whether he wants to move towards this side or that side. And when Abraham says, no, we have to depart here. And this is not going to work, beloved. And I give you the upper hand, pick whatever you want. And you know what this guy did? I go there, I can make easy money and easy business. Therefore, he went and settled in Sodom and Gomorrah, compromising his intimacy with God. That's the first thing, category. Now, let's, let's, let's immediately, I want you to compare who you are. Don't get carried away towards Lot. Who are you, brother? What kind of business you deal? You have a liquor shop and you have a cross hanging around in the middle of your liquor shop, bar and restaurant. Huh? And Sundays you come to the church and uh, you, you worship God. And then again, after two hours, you go back to the liquor shop and you, you know, or you are into some sort of uh, business and, uh, you know, probably you're dealing with drugs. And I'll, I'm taking the extreme example, but even the little things, right? You have a kind of a supermarket and what do you sell? You, you sell tobacco, cigarettes. You need to ban certain products if you're the true believer. Why? You may get a good cut of income, but your intimacy with God will not allow you to be joining hands with the worldly people. You will not have your identity anywhere earmarked on the worldly side. That's it. immediately we want to compare, right? What is your intimacy? Where your confidence lies, there your intimacy happens to be. Right? There's a simple formula. You, you may be working at a very good company, very good company, and they sell various products. For example, you know, it can be a printer company, it can be healthcare industry or whatever. Um, and that's okay. But how you how you treat your boss, someone who is above your guard, whatever he says you want to do, he wants you to spy around and uh, kind of go and um, harass somebody. Why? Because he's your boss and you're going to compromise on your um, intimacy with God, the rules and doctrines and the laws and commandments which God had predestined for you. This is what Lord did. Lord decided to move away from God, yet go in the name of Jesus. You know, we have seen people, right? Yeah, 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 we are believers in Jesus. What do you mean believers in Jesus, brother and sister? Is your life matching? See, again, no one will be able to judge you except God. That's very personal. That's why we are um, having these kind of series to give you that revelation from God and allowing you to introspect because you are the best judge of who you are. That's called as introspection. And you cannot hide anything from God. He's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and he lives inside of you. Can you hide anything? If there is some believer telling that, Oh, God doesn't see all of this. It's okay. Grace is there to forgive me. You know what you're doing? You're insulting Jesus. That's what Lot did. He insulted God who blessed uh, him through Abraham. Yeah, so much, so much of wealth that uh, his wealth grew as good as Abraham's wealth equally. And you know what? He could have become an assistant to Abraham. He could have become an immediate role model to Abraham. And we will leave. We will we will talk about it in in, in, the, in the studies to come. So first thing is his intimacy. His heart was very much attached towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because he can make easy money, easy trade, and it's already a city that has flourished. But what is the culture? Actually, I don't care. Yeah, some people you know make this funny statements. <clears throat> you know why, brother? God had not allowed me to go out of Catholic tradition. Because he wants me to be there, therefore all the Catholics will listen to me. You know, over a period of time, what will happen? You will become one of them. That's exactly what happened to Lot. Brother, you need to walk out of the places where there is defilement, where there is no word of God, where there is no Holy Spirit. You think because of you, the Holy Spirit will move around in and through? The Holy Spirit cannot enter the place where there is no entry for him. I just took an example, right? Many I gave you other examples too. In the name of trade and business, the believers are into multiple things. They get into real estate. And they cheat people to take cuts. You may be in government organization. You take a lot of bribe. Yet you would give one-tenth in the name of tithe. And first of all, we are 
New Testament is blind about tithe, right? You can even give 100% if God speaks to you. It's up to you. God watches you, man. Brothers, God watches you. What is your heart like? Right? When somebody cries and comes out where you, there is a need that you give your 100% to them. No, no, no. As a principle, I can give only 10%. Then what kind of believer you are? Where is your intimacy lying? Lord's intimacy was lying there because the land was flourishing. Now let's read the first three verses um, together, right? Um, uh, now the two angels came to uh, Genesis 19, 1, 2, and 3 will be our meditation verse for today. Yeah? Okay. And uh, we will compare it with the New Testament. Probably that much only time we have. You see? So nine categories, we may have to go through nine sessions. This is not, I do not know. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't allow me to rush. I'm sorry. Genesis 19, chapter uh, verse 1. Um, now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. You, you, uh, when Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. Now, what does this mean? What have you understood? Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. I will ask you a question for you to think. You think Lot was aware that day angels will come uh, as if there was some telepathy or some kind of um, tower uh, communication channel. Abraham knew before Lot knew because they had gone to Abraham's house and they had nice dinner. Uh, sorry, lunch probably. And they said, we are going to Lot's place. You think Abraham sent a servant? Bible is not saying that, right? Bible is not going to hide anything. It's a book of truth and uh, revelation. This was their habitual practice of Lot. I think probably once he finishes everything, he moves out of that place where there is intensified sinful deeds. Bunch of, uh, you know, uh, people doing witchcraft one side, sorcery other side, homosexual, lesbians and paganism and, uh, you know, people killing each other, violence, mob gathering. All these things were there. Well, I think he's not able to tolerate. Why? Because the 25% of spiritual deeds is at work in him. It's pricking his heart. It's pricking his conscience. Therefore, you know what he was doing habitually as a practice? He would just walk out of that place. Let me stay out of all this nonsense. I'm not able to take it in. Yet, <laughs> you want to stay there. Why? Because I need that little money. I need that little pleasure. Yeah. You know that pornography is absolutely defiling the body of uh, the temple of God, your body. Yet you need that little pleasure and you will be looking for the verses that will allow you to excuse why the flesh is weak. Many people stick to that verse. Flesh is weak for the people who have not yet accepted Christ. For people who have accepted Christ, flesh concept itself is not there. It's all about spirit filled concept. That means what? You are not dead to your flesh, brother. Go on. Every day you may take water baptism. Yet it is useless. The change must happen within you. Some people talk about this magic paraphrases, right? You take water baptism, accept name of Jesus. That's it. Heaven is you know, reserved for you. Maybe yes. I, I'm not the judge here. God judges you, right? Maybe yes. Maybe no. But I can tell you, it will be no in most of the cases. Why? Actual battle, actual struggle, actual journey begins only after you have accepted Jesus. And who holds that crown? Crown of glory, crown of faith, yeah, crown of testimony. And, and still they are overcomers. They inherit the throne. That's what we had been reading, no? Revelation 3.21. Hmm? Okay, now this fellow had the habitual practice. Lot had the practice of always staying outside. Now, you may be staying outside um, for, a, for a while. But actually, what would be Lot doing? Where, do, where, where does he sleep actually? He has to go back to that place, no? What kind of life, brother? Whom are you fooling? You're fooling yourself. You're fooling God. You have that conscious. You need to say no, a strong no, and quit the habit. Yeah. So he was a kind of a hybrid brand. That's what I was telling you. He was a partial believer here and there. 
now this guy was sitting outside thinking okay at least that that moment of time let me have that peace of mind and he happened to see those angels look at the timing of the angels right two angels came uh, actually you know they came as three people father son and the spirit that's the uh, symbolic representation of trinity that's why they came like in three person hmm? and two of them came and i'm not here and neither bible is saying who are those two father and son father and spirit what is it leave that aside no that's unnecessary two angels came and uh, they stood they came to sodom on in the evening yeah that's why i was saying they had lunch probably in at abraham's place and lord was sitting in the gate of sodom uh, why because by then the business would be over and then he would want to just come out of that place and just sit there and when lord saw them he rose to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground how was the lord able to recognize that they were the children of god or maybe they are the angels of god bible is little passive about it okay um what my imagination tells is i think probably there was a kind of a dress code right when you get into certain places for example you get into pub who gets into the pub bunch of rascals alcoholists and uh, you know rapists and all these guys how will be their dress code look at their face the beards will be cut and the sides will be sharpened with something tattoos all around um yeah some and they will be always roaming around with girls flirtish people you can easily make out or you think a pastor will go with a church, you know uh, or a catholic father will go with a cross around his neck and with a bible preach inside the pub no they will not make an entry because why the spirit doesn't allow but these two fellows are not fellows i'm sorry these two people the angel of god what then and as they were approaching towards the gate of sodom he his mind was running they never spoke a word neither did he ask anything right there is no interaction happening so far it's only like a conscience uh, that is at work for lot is looking at them from a distance as they are approaching his mind starts working why because there is still some spirit of god left in him isn't it it's not completely over he's still a, his, his conscience is killing him and I, why is he sitting at the uh, gate every day because his conscience pricks every day what am i doing in this place this is not the right place am i not supposed to be with abraham should i return back or not every day he is kind of Uh, you know perplexed or in, con- in confusions or at at war the flesh is at war with the spirit yeah i really pity lot right he's a, he's a good man that's why god recognizes even that person who had that little bit of spirit in him in hebrews 11 he's also considered just like how abraham was considered abraham also made mistakes by the way yeah like how isaac was uh, considered everyone was considered lot is considered there but you know what solomon never made his entry into heaven although god blessed him phenomenally there wasn't a person on earth filled with wisdom and riches just like solomon was but this fellow never had that faith and attachment to god that little attachment also he didn't had he didn't have with god and that's why he was missed and even today also solomon's temple people go and they worship god they call it a solomon's temple but his name is not there correct or not but this guy lord what made god to write that lord's name is there all that there isn't intimacy but there is realization inside of him therefore you have you and i have a good news you still have the realization when you sin you don't feel that great you feel re- how many days how many times have you been sobbing the all, whole night or when have you basically you know when when were your pillow covers wet tell me for me it happened multiple times almost every single day i would say <laughs> every other day you know what is at work the conscience the holy spirit inside of you is at work is groaning along with you and you get that feeling it troubles you if it is not troubling you brother you can be very very clear mark my words you can be very very clear you are a worldly person and there is no holy spirit inside of you you are filled with evil spirit but you like enjoying the message like how herod would call for John the Baptist enjoy the word of God and send back John the Baptist to jail and you know what he does immediately he will call 
um, his his uh, brother's daughter and he would be making her dance half naked or three fourth naked or completely naked. He enjoys that. What is inside of him? Evil spirit. You you have a doubt? Then you need to check the word of God again. That's how you who you are. But Lot wasn't like Herod. Lot, Lot had a different spirit. He lacked an intimacy with God, making the right call, right um, judgment uh, on what he wants to do. Yet there was realization. That's when he realized those two men walking. He saw their outlook. He saw the spirit of God in them. He looked at their faces intently. Immediately God's revelation came on him. And he rose up to his feet. Oh, angels of God. Some disaster is going to come. Those days angels of God comes. No, that's it. Finished. Always you take and read Old Testament. When the angels of God will come, people will be terrified. That is like death has come to this place. Disaster came to this place. Why? Because Bible says God can hear the uh, r you know rumbling noise you know which the wicked people make and it reaches heaven and God pays attention to it and he sends his angels to check out what's happening there. Then these angels came. Lot is no, very well aware no, what is happening in that place. He thought for sure gone. This is the evil day. This is the day finished. Right, immediately he rose up in fear, trembling in fear. And he recognized, oh, these angels are there. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he's a rever that reverence, you see, without his attention, his, that reverence came back. He bowed before God. Many, many of us do that, right? When we realize, when we saw, we bow before God. We cry in tears, oh my God, my father, I have disrespected you this way. I'm sorry. We saw, we saw, but what happens the next day determines whether your walk with God is steadfast. You understand what I'm saying? Or you're compromising on your spiritual quality. Even without these angels, Lot used to cry. What do you think he would be sitting in there every day evening at the gates and doing? He will be sobbing. Your his conscience killing him. You think he will be uh, cherishing with a, you know, you know, with a with glass of alcohol and uh, one piece of cigarette and you think he will be enjoying no he will be sobbing because the oh, the days with abraham were so spiritual so reverent and we used to have fellowship i miss my uncle i miss my god i'm only a partial christian that's where he saw the angels look at the timing of angels because angels are aware no god is aware evening they could have come uh, in the morning no morning this guy would be busy see look at the mercy of god right the compassion of god that little bit of goodness in Lord, they would want to honor. They would want to make uh, Lord feel good and show that respect. You see, our God is the one who respects us. We fail to respect him, but he doesn't fail. Yeah, he remembers us all the time. And uh, evening only, this guy, Lord will come. No, so let's go have lunch. And let's, that's what, and, and, and what would uh, God say? Like, how can I hide anything from my friend Abraham? Abraham was so intimate with God and he said, first I need to make him know. Why? Because there is a bloodline between these two fellows, right? And uh, how would I face Abraham? Look at the, when I, when I speak of this, right? I feel like crying. I'm already, I'm already crying. <laughs> I can't believe this love of God. Can you believe that he goes to Abraham, a mere human being and not even a Israelite, not even washed by the blood of Jesus. He has full of sins. And his background was paganism because his father was a maker of idols. Yeah, he, God goes to Abraham and says, how can I hide it from my friend Abraham? What will he think of me? How will I be able to face him? Can you believe this great God who runs the universe going and showing his intimacy? God shows that intimacy to Abraham saying, my friend, you know what? I'm going to do this, man. Please, please don't mistake me. Huh? I understand your cousin is there. I will take care of him. You don't worry. Indirectly, Abraham was challenging God. Even if one guy was righteous, will you spare him? What? Ultimately, he wants to save Lot and his family. That's why he is bargaining or negotiating. And God understood. No, God says, don't worry, Baba. I will ensure that your, your nephew is not touched. Okay? Don't worry. Like that, he gave him the confidence. And that's when Abraham was able to sleep that night. Okay, but still I think Abraham's heart was there, right? Um, and he knows that, right? He respects Lot. Why? Because that evening only he will come and he won't be able to freely have that interaction with him um, in the middle of 
uh, whatever the chaotic situation and who knows god's anger arouses right the, he may not even get time to interact with lot and he doesn't want to do that way now our god is very organized god he's very slow that's why we are also preaching the bible very very slow we are not in a rush therefore lot understands okay lot falls himself before uh, bows himself before god and he said here now my lords here now what lord says please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet then you may rise early and go on your way what he thought he thought okay they came to just check how lot is doing see one way one side lot is having that intimacy that realization the other side there is a lot of immaturity <clears throat> he trembled with fear shouldn't he understand that you know they have come to destroy probably you know that's where the worldly related pleasures will hide your spiritual qualities will suppress your spiritual will choke your spiritual qualities that's what happened with this fellow he see the way how abraham negotiated with god is different from how the way lot negotiates lot wants to save his property his, uh, his children and uh, all that and all his earnings bank balances everything is there only no he knows angels will definitely do something something is going to be terribly wrong tonight finished matter over that's why he says you come i will silently take you into my house spend that whole night we'll have good fellowship and morning you can go this guy is what instructing in other words the angels this is what you should do we also instruct no god this is what you need to do you heal me now why i should be trouble in trouble why i should go through this pain did i not carry your word carrying the cross is nothing but you know embracing hugging and giving that strong kiss to the trouble because you don't look at the trouble as a trouble why because you count it all joy because it's written in the book of life and it's not easy it's not easy okay now coming back to lord's life right now lord says uh, lord will lord is kind of instructing you come have dinner go what they are like you know bunch of kindergarten students angels of god <laughs> you know what they said very interesting to read that they said and they said no <laughs> that's no in double quotes you know what it means no means what absolutely no <laughs> forget it forget it lord you think we don't understand your conscience you think we don't understand your thought process we know where your heart is yet we have the respect why you are first of all nephew to mr abraham my 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 close friend and uh, i see that little bit of realization inside of you but don't dictate me this way but we will spend the night in the open square they refuse to come to lost house what an insult you invite somebody they say yeah we will come yeah. somebody will straight away refuse no 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 we don't want to come yeah we are of that high caste you are of that low caste casteism is terrible in india yeah how do you feel tell me i don't think you will be able to eat your food that night you will be hurt isn't it and uh, they refuse to come why because they know that you are not completely spiritual this is the, the spiritual meaning you know what you may be thinking and fooling yourself that since you have accepted jesus and uh, baptized and etc holy spirit is already inside of you he is not there he is at the open square he is waiting at the doorstep he is walking with you agreed he is protecting you agreed because you call upon the name of jesus guardian angels are at work agreed but he is not living inside of you he is waiting at the open square waiting for the day you will repent waiting for the day holistically you will represent the spiritual qualities inside of you and until that day comes he's not going to come inside of you and you know what happens if he doesn't come inside of you and you're dead and gone you're not going to be part of god's throne god's inheritance revelation 321 you are not a overcomer you didn't have any portion any share with the holy spirit then what happens you're not part of god's kingdom brothers that's uh, to such people only god tells i knew not who you are they will say in your name we did this we did that we prophesied we drove the demons and we did miracles and all that you did you didn't do it holy spirit did it because people called in the, the name of jesus it's for the people's mercy is mercy towards people it's not the it's not the respect for you it's not because he honored you he considered you no 
in the name of Jesus, things happen there. Similarly, they refuse to get into his house. Why? Because there is no spirituality there. You are a carnal being, fellow. No, you are not coming there. No, they said. No. Why? Because his intimacy is not holistic. Your intimacy, we are talking about intimacy, right? You are a friend of the world and you lack intimacy with God. They saw that. They refused to come. All right. Verse 3 and we are done. Okay. We will try to close in another five, ten minutes. But he insisted strongly. So verse 3. Who? Lot insisted strongly. Please, please come. Don't insult me like this. No. When again comparing from spiritual angle, you also sob the whole night. What happens? Holy Spirit comes. Why? Because he's not able to bear the way how you are crying, the way how you are insisting, the way how you are sobbing, the way how you are realizing. And he comes inside of you. But what happens tomorrow morning? Again, you go back to that same old sin. What happens? Holy Spirit gently walks out of you. This is what is happening in many Christians. Back and forth. You are like that wave tossed by the wind. Back, in, back and forth. You, you, you see the waves, right? They go and they come back like a seesaw. You know seesaw, right? You play seesaw. One side upwards, one side downwards. Backslidden. Worries of the world. Yeah, choked with so many thoughts and all that so what happens is since he insisted him strongly they turned in him and entered into him and entered his house they came inside then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and they ate all right it's about your sacrifices worship and all that so in the, in, the, in a spiritual tense you are sharing your intimacy why because you're very happy you're very joyful right immediately when you can feel try it out try it out uh, you know check your conscience the moment you you have that peace in your heart you can be sure holy spirit is dwelling that's why you get that peace amidst of worries amidst of troubles amidst of sickness etc you will feel that joy in your heart that peace that's what lord felt that night that's why he's so joyful he had that fellowship oh he has come inside my house you will feel that okay now, I think we spoke through very well what happens when you are intimate with God, what happens when you are not intimate with God. Although you are partially intimate with God, that also we touched. And that's why we picked Lot as an example. Right? He was partially intimate and God still respects this. Um, take and read 1 Corinthians 6.19 and with that we will be closing our study for today. 1 Corinthians uh, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 6 19, please. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? We have already spoken, but we want to read from the scripture. Whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Question mark. King James Version. Very beautifully they have written. You are not your own means what? You don't. How do I explain this? I think you understand, huh? Your body doesn't belong to you, brother. You're a tenant. You're a tenant in this world. Your body itself is kind of a rented facility. Who is the actual owner? Holy Spirit. Then without asking his permission, how dare you do things of your own will and pleasure and your own desire, your own judgment, anything, inside or outside. Inside defilement happens through thought process. Outside happens through actions, where you go, where you transport your body and what you speak out of your mouth. How dare? Who will be doing all of this? Those that are not intimate with God. You are connected. You are intimate with somebody. You will be very careful. No? Right? You, you are intimate. That's why I gave you the ch child and parents uh, example. You will be you are intimate. You know what your child likes. And you will surprise him, him or her. The children with on their birthdays and etc. What they like. You know, some people won't even have money, but they will take, uh, you know, debts and they will buy. Why? Because their intimacy, you know, it will take them to that supreme level. So when you are in, in that supreme level, how is it that believers are compromising on this truth that their own body belongs, doesn't belong? That's why when you are sick, don't worry, Bible says. Why? God is aware, no? You, you think God uh, extracts pleasure through your sick body? No, he is worried. He is also unhappy. But he allows that for a moment. Second Corinthians 4, 17. For a mere moment, affliction will be permitted. Why? Because he gets the best out of your character and faith. Okay. Second verse. Um, 
1 Corinthians 6 19 and 20 now for you were brought at a price very important therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's God and apostrophe s which means what you don't belong to yourself that's exactly what Lot forgot yeah he, he thought he can do anything but still carry the name of Yahweh and all that I will not be let down and every day I'm sure he would be praying but then that's the only reason why angels saved them saved him they definitely is going to pay some uh, uh, you know uh, returns but yeah that that won't take you to the throne room of heaven seriously okay good I think we will close the session with this first characteristic type that we spoke uh, of the worldly believers and that's why we picked the example of Lot. I hope you understood. Um, please rewind the tape. We have Holy Spirit did a great job explaining to all of us. Um, you, you do not be the friend of the world and the worldly pleasures, worldly desires, compromising on your spiritual deeds and spiritual quality, which means you are not intimate with God, right? Okay, let's bow our head and close our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for uh, sharing this great word and explaining us why it is important to be united with God, unified with the Holy Spirit, because we will be compromising on intimacy. The day we compromise on intimacy, it's the evil spirit who will take control. And the, the sad part is the end result is going to be in eternity, we will be thrown into the lake of fire and we will not have inheritance in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to realize our sinful deeds. Take care of my brethren and sister, whoever had been listening to that message. Work with them in a very personal way. Shed light on their sinful deeds and drag them out of that distractions in life and be an intimate friend to all of us, God. We welcome you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Stay tuned. I will meet you soon with chapter 10.